Hi, I'm George Carl, the pastor of the Tanner Street Church and a member of the board of Mission Missouri. It was several weeks ago, a couple of months ago at best, that I first became interested in funding the work of Mission Missouri. And here's why. We received a report at one of our board meetings that gave a, a statistic that to me was alarming. And the statistic was from the an assessment of the various counties in Missouri and showing how many people are served or what percentage of people are served compared to the need in that county. In Scott County, only 19% of those who struggle with addictive lifestyles or drug addiction are being served. And I thought only 19%, how can we reach more people in our community and beat that 19% statistic? How can we incrementally year after year improve that number so that we are really making a difference in this community among those who uh, struggle with addictions? Well, the answer always comes down to we have to have more facilities and more service providers. We need to have more personnel, more paid personnel who give their best energies, not just volunteers who can check out at any time, not just someone who cares but doesn't have the time, somebody who's paid to give their best energies to this work of reaching the addicted person in our community. Well, the answer to that, of course, is funding. More facilities, more service providers, full-time paid personnel who will do the work of counseling and uh, supervising a residential uh, uh, facility. And those people are paid well enough so that they are, have incentive to get involved in that work. I began to think, how do we fund it? And I know that there are grants available to us that we don't even know about yet. There are so many grants by foundations who care about the same things that Mission Missouri is trying to uh, do and care about, trying to reach people who are addicted, try to get them out of that lifestyle and into a responsibility lifestyle. How do we get access to that money? Well, it is no small matter. And writing grants is a skill set that very few of us possess, and very few of us have the time to really investigate the plethora of grant opportunities by the many foundations that care about the things that we're doing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a moment. If you take a look at this website, which we're going to do in just a little bit, the astounding uh, fact is this is called Grant Watch, and there are 5,295 foundations that are accepting grant applications. This is just one of several websites that can lead you to the many foundations that are available uh, that might fund a project that Mission Missouri might undertake. As you can see on this particular opening page, there are over 5,000 way over 5,000 different grants, grant organizations or foundations that uh, give grants. That is a lot of work just to look through that many. It would be insurmountable for me and probably for you. Let me take you and to the next slide where we'll pare it down just a little bit. You can see from that area that I circled in red, it is possible to trim down the number of foundations that you have to look at in order to find one that matches your cause. Of the available filters, I selected faith-based as one option. And um, you can add more filters, which I'll do here shortly. That reduces it down considerably. It's still an insurmountable amount uh, to select. Just watch as I move to the next slide. When I selected faith-based, it reduced it down to 503 foundations that offer grants to organizations that are faith-based. Well, that's still a lot, and it's still too much for you or I to, to go through and find what we're looking for, and even knowing whether any one of those 503 really do match us or which ones. Now I'm going to add another filter, and that is 
maybe just the ones that apply to Missouri, though I wouldn't want to limit our scope of search to just those are specifically for Missouri because some of the foundations that may be very interested in what we do uh, might apply or might be uh, available to all 50 states and we wouldn't want to miss out on those. That does reduce the field to 62 foundations that may very well be interested in what we're trying to do. Well that is still a huge amount because each grant has to be researched to find out what they're wanting to do and how to write a grant specifically for that organization. Now I'm adding yet another filter and that filter is substance abuse and let's see what happens there. I'm not exactly sure why but that increased the number of foundations that uh, might be interested in what we're doing because we're dealing with substance abuse issues to 264. That goes back to being entirely insurmountable for a person who has a full-time job. I am proposing in light of all of the, this information that we hire a grant writer to navigate through the many many opportunities that are available beyond even this website. Select and pursue grants that may enable us to significantly expand our work in facility, in program, and in personnel so that we might be able to pursue a much higher success rate among the community that needs the kind of work and kind of help that Mission Missouri provides. Here's a breakdown of the estimated expenses that are all on a contract basis, of course. First of all, about four hours to profile the Mission Missouri plan of action to move us to the next level of success among the community that would use and could use drug rehabilitation services. Then it'll take about 15 hours to come up with a viable list of foundations that might want to help us financially. Then about two hours of selecting those viable ones that to uh, determine the best matches for ours because you want to pursue the best match first. That gives you your, your best opportunity. Writing takes a significant chunk of time and that's where the skill set is. Knowing how to write and knowing how to write for a particular foundation so that they would be interested in what we're doing. You have to get to know the culture of that foundation and that's what grant writing is all about and uh, we'd need about 20 hours, estimated 20 hours for that. And then another four hours in doing follow-up correspondence because if there is a responsive foundation there's be more correspondence and these are estimates but pretty fair estimates that Crystal Berry the key is to find someone who knows their way around this entire industry of foundations and grant opportunities. I came to know somebody who is from Sykeston who moved away and did some work in uh, writing grants for other organizations and nonprofits and has since moved back. Her name is Crystal Berry and I want to introduce her to you because she is a person that knows her way around this industry, knows how to write grants, and is successful at doing so. And I'd like for you to meet her. Well, hi, Crystal. I'm glad that we can meet by Zoom, and I hope you're having a good day. Hi, I am. Thank you for this invite, and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Well, great. You know, you have, you've really been involved not only in community service work before, um, in other places, but actually in Sykeston. So what has been your involvement in the community uh, here in Sykeston? Uh, well, so since I'm not a native Sykestonian, <laughs> um, I started out uh, when I first moved here in the early 2000s um, with a, a group called Altrusa. Uh, they're a community outreach group. They focus on, um, I, their big thing is focusing on reading for, for children and um, really promoting that and um, helping in, in, the, in the schools and those kinds of things. Um, so through Altrusa, I got to get my feet wet in Sykeston and meet a great bunch of people 
um, one of whom was the board of was on the board of directors for the House of Refuge. And she had told me that they were looking for a grant writer and I had, didn't know anything about House of Refuge. So she and I talked and um, that was another great community project that I thought I could really help. Um, and I think it's important to be part of your community. So um, that's kind of where I got started in, in my community involvement is through Altrusa and then House of Refuge. And that really opened up the doors for a lot of community connection because um, there's a lot of great pro uh, programs in Sykeston that are geared towards helping people. Um, and with House of Refuge, we had similar um, goals with uh, Mission Go. And so we had some parallel efforts there. And that's how I met uh, Janie Pfefferkorn. I don't know if she remembers me because it was a while back, but um, she and I had some uh, had our paths cross a couple times on those adventures. Right. And then you moved away and, and got involved in some kind of community service organizations doing similar kinds of things there oh, and then came back. So Exactly. Um, so in, in Las Vegas, there wasn't an Altrusa uh, chapter, which made me sad, but um, I did find little ways to, to help out in my local community. And um, our HOA had some, some programs that we were highly involved in. Um, so... And then we came back here and I'm looking to, to get back into the community. Yeah. And you, you've been doing grant writing then ever since that time. So how many total years has that been? Oh, I started grant writing with House of Refuge in 2009. Uh, is it 2009? Yeah, 2009. And um, so can't do the math on that. It was not <laughs> almost 10 years, right? Yeah, a little. It, it, uh, little it's now 20, 12 years then, or 11 yeah. years. <laughs> Maybe 12, yeah. But nonetheless, that's great. Um, how did you get involved in grant writing um, outside of this community? And what skill sets did you develop that might help us now? Um, so with the, with the grant writing here with House of Refuge, um, I actually moved over to the DAOC uh, Boot Hill, let's see, it was, it was the, it was called Brave, but it stood for Boot Hill Regional Anti-Violence Experiment, and that was their, their women's shelter in Malden, and so I did more grant writing there, um, and then after I did grant writing with them, um, I was looking to relocate, and the state of Nevada had applied to be a unmanned systems test site for the federal aviation, the FAA. Ah. And I applied for a job with them and became their contract slash grant specialist for the program management office of that organization. And that kind of opened new doors for my grants because before then all my grant work had been um, really social, um, social based yeah, on helping people. And this was a different type of grant. This was um, more technical, more um, program oriented and not so much people oriented. <laughs> uh, and after I worked with them and, and the state became a test site, um, the program management office kind of changed gears and I signed up with a government contractor um, called AECOM doing government contracts uh, for their organization. So again, more technical stuff, more government stuff, um, really learning the ins and outs of what governments are, are really looking for. And uh, also the, the auditing side, is I got to experience that. Um, and then that job led me to my current employer called Praxis Aerospace. I am the chief operating officer with them. Um, I have got that down to a T. So I work part-time for them managing that company. And then I also uh, have a lot of, some free time for community involvement and personal development and things like that, which is what I really wanted to focus on this year. Um, so I've been doing grants and grant related things that entire time. Um, over the past couple of years, it's been a little um, of a less focused on my, on my things, but it's always intertwined. Yeah. Well, and a breadth of different kinds of organizations. So you truly got, had a chance to get to know the grant writing industry as such. <laughs> and well, 
what are some successes that you had in grant writing that you're really happy about? Um, so anytime that a, a smaller foundation grant came open that we were awarded, I was really happy about because um, those are really hard to get. So many agencies apply for those and they, they're not always the, the biggest cash, but they're the hardest to get just because so many people know about them. So when I was with House of Refuge, we got the Mary Kay Grant Foundation one year and that was a big deal. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was a big deal because so many people know about it and to be awarded that was a really was a really yeah. special honor. You you won a, amongst the field of competition that yeah. Has, yeah, Mary Kay is a well-known organization. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Um another one that I'm really proud of is the um the HUD grant for shelters and community um when that came out in I think it opened back up in, I want to say, hold on, let me check my notes real quick. Um, somewhere around the 2012 um, timeline, that was, they had completely restructured the grant and you had to have an extreme amount of community involvement. And it wasn't just about you getting money. It was about you getting money and tying it to other organizations. And it was really a community grant Um is what it ended up being and I was so proud because I missed the 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 timeline when it came out and I almost missed the mandatory meeting but I I heard about it and I drove to Jefferson City like that day <laughs> so I could make the meeting <laughs> um learned about this and you know it had become a way more involved grant and um much more of a massive undertaking than it had been previously. So I had to, to learn all of that information. Um, the deadline was right around a holiday. So trying to do community outreach with everybody during a holiday season was challenging, um, but we made the deadline and we got the maximum amount of funding um, allowed under that grant at that time. Um, that was when I was with the, the Day Act uh, Brave program and uh so that was a, a really big success yes, it, yes, it is. If, if i can if i can tell you one more Please. <laughs> it's my absolute favorite story um when i was with praxis just starting out the the state had been awarded the um the faa uas test site status and the faa wanted to go to each of the test sites there were only five in the country the faa wanted to come out and have a public meeting for each of the areas to let local people and local entities and um, industry come and talk to the FAA directly about the test sites and what they wanted and, and how everything was supposed to look. And our state put out a bid to um, host the meeting. They, you know, they, out, they were basically outsourcing it. And Praxis didn't necessarily want to profit from that but we wanted to be the ones hosting it. So it was more of a bragging rights than a, a, fi a financial deal for us. Um, and we had really great connections. So we were able to put in a really low bid. Like everybody else was putting in like twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Ours was like a thousand. And, uh, you know, we, we won. <laughs> and the state submitted that to the FAA and the FAA came back and said, you cannot do it for a thousand dollars. You have to ask for more money. So it's my favorite because not many grant writers are told you have to ask for more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, wow. Anything else that Mission Missouri might want to know about how you would go about helping us find grants that could uh, help us expand our facility program and personnel? Well, you and I have talked a little bit about the um, the Mission Missouri programs and kind of what they're doing. And I think it's really important for you guys to have somebody who isn't afraid to get into what you guys are really looking for and really um, jump into it and, and find the best fit for you. Um, I feel that sometimes when you talk to grant writers, they just want to help you get money. I want to help you get your mission through. 
And if that means bringing in money, then great. That means bringing in money. But if that means tailoring your programs and kind of tweaking things to get your mission, I want to help you with that. And I think that uh, I'm in a really good opportunity and really good place to help you with that and figure out um, where it is you want to go and a good path to get there. Um, I also think I have really good skills to help you see that big picture. And sometimes little funding things help you stair step to bigger funding things. Yeah. So I to, to be part of that plan and really um, see everything grow even more than it has in the, the eight years that I've been gone. Um, the, the program has, has drastically increased with the Esther House being part of it. Uh, so I'm excited to, to learn more and to help you guys grow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Watt. And uh, you just helped us understand exactly what kinds of things you can do. And that's tremendously helpful. So I oh, look perfect. forward to talking some more. Thank you. I look forward to it. And if you guys have any questions or you want any, any, anything else, just let me know. Well, we will. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right. Now, why is this important to me? Well, first of all, as a minister, I'm into the individual's life and redeeming them. That's God's purpose, and so I'm about that. I believe that God cares about the individual and wants to redeem a person from the pit of the addictive lifestyle and move them into a responsibility lifestyle because they're going to be happier. They're going to have dignity. They're going to experience the image of God with which they are created. But there's other reasons. On a broader scale, besides the individual, is our society. And we have a severe shortage of workers, and we have a plethora of laborers, people who could go to work if they could get out of their addictive lifestyle. Drugs has debilitated our workforce, and we can do something about that and actually improve our economy. And then what about our culture itself? There is un uh, locked up in some of those who are in addictive lifestyles, creativity, ideas, potential that we actually need. And so when we do something about the person who's caught up in an addictive lifestyle, we are impacting our world in every conceivable way, spiritually, socially, even economically. And we're the ones trying to do it. Mission Missouri and groups like us. And so this is very important for us to do it and I think it's in worth the investment of the proposal that we're about to show you and uh, give to you on paper. So please consider this proposal as a avenue, a way to get us to the funding that would enable us to attract the kind of service providers who will uh, and facilities and, and counselors and people who we need to give their best energies toward this important